<laughs> yeah, she likes it. Yeah, it'd be a little yeah, birthday on the video. So I, I kind yeah, of pop. very, very curious little girl. She's very curious. Mm hmm. That thing should say, yeah. and you'll have a little video of her little birthday where she was on Nana's uh, TV show. Okay. I had started it, started it when we were when I sung the happy birthday, maybe a little bit before, but um, and then cut it off at the end. So after she blew the kiss, so she always have her little video on TV and Nana's TV show. She do they call okay. you Nana or Grammy or Grand? Mima. 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 Oh, that's Mima. cute. Yeah, Mima. Yeah, I'm too I, old. I'm, I'm too good looking. I'm too young and too good looking to be a grandma now. Come yeah, on, I know. It's, it's Mima. I know. I know. But I, I am think. so blessed to have grandbabies. I, I mean, you know, that's what you live for. You live for to have those grandbabies, you know, and then... You, when they when they give the parents hell, you go see. Now you see how I feel. And and to be uh -huh. as fabulous as we are at our age and be grandmothers. Oh, yes. G mom. What a blessing. Yes. What a blessing. Wait, let me show you another one of my grandbabies. I have two. I actually okay. have three. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. This is this is Layla. I thought I had. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I know. I got that picture of Layla. Wait, no, not that one, because I put the caption on that. Let's see. <laughs> you might not be able to see it because of the glare. Oh, yes. Oh, she's a little one, huh? Yeah, oh. she's little. She, mm -hmm. she was born in um, March. Yes, she's just getting on around yeah. in the world. Got a little yes, yes. And she, uh, I think I just did something to my camera. It does look different a little bit, huh? But yeah, they're not cool. good. I tell you, uh, what's his name, Freddie? Oh, yeah. He's probably going, is that the same crazy looking woman I was talking to earlier today? <laughs> yeah, Fred's good people. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's good people. Yeah. Goodness. So, um, I think that... I don't know why am I getting emails from Craigslist. Okay. Did you um, sign up for anything? Post anything? Or no? Comment on anything? I think I did. You know what? Yes, I did. I did. I put my book on Craigslist. Mm hmm. So I'm going to see if I can unsubscribe because they keep saying it's crap. Right. It ain't like they're saying they want to buy the book right now, huh? Right. Right. I'm having right. a time this so, night with this hair. And this, what's going on with your hair? Um, tangling up and everything. I'm just not really satisfied with the jewelry that I have on tonight. So I must say, uh, I will have to make a, a trip over to this boutique I heard about. Uh, Definitely. The, <laughs> the elegant lady, Vega, yes. Louisiana. And. 121 Van Buren. Okay. <laughs> And that's in that the city in, in the city of Zachary or Baker. 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 Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay Baker, for Baker. Louisiana. Trying yeah. to get Baker, Louisiana on the map. You know, shout out to um, Baker. People are kind of basically passing that little city by. Yeah. You know, and zoom into Zachary or zoom into Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I tell you. Shout out to Baker. Go Buffalo. Woo hoo hoo. Mm. Well, I have to well, say, um, for our listeners and viewers out there, if you're checking in with us, we are Two Women Talking. Yes. I'm uh, just talking, baby. Yeah, and so I guess we should probably introduce ourselves. We're going to have to clip and edit all of this to get it like smooth. And then it's probably okay. just. I know one thing this TV's got me off on which way to pull the top. I look like I'm low on one side and high on the other. And I, I really always have hated these tops. If they don't come with straps or uh, something to tie behind my neck, I'm lost with it. Uh, well, all I know is I'm trying to figure out what I played with the other night mm -hmm. that got that has my speech a couple of seconds off. Right. I'm noticing that I'm getting some uh, breakup. Uh, do we have any other windows open? Let me check mine too. I did just reboot oh. so. I can close that Google box. 
And I think I can close that other box without it affecting us. Let's see. Oh, it wouldn't let me just pop back up. So, okay. Have it your way. Um, I don't know what I did the other night when I was playing around with this thing, trying to make sure that, um, trying try to get the picture looking better or something. Whatever I did, I screwed up. Mm-hmm. Well, um, video resolution. Let's go back to 10, I guess. What it, let's see. Works. That may work. Nope. That I work. It must be some kind of band. Maybe I did some type of delay or something on this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have something down here with the yellow exclamation. You're in and get a call. You have online friends. Click here to add friends to the call. No. Click. I don't know why that was sitting up there because we're not trying to add friends to the call. The show is called. Correct. Two women, two talking. women talking. Get That's about it. it. Okay. So let's get let's get back to the physicia. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I Fred came by and he did bring the a meal replacement. Mm-hmm. A meal and, replacement. Um, it's a replacement, but for you, I would consider it as a supplement. So mm-hmm. to take drink it. And then maybe two hours later, eat your regular meal. Okay. That uh, it's going to give you the nutrition you need. And I think that a lot of your problem with being tired all the time, you're just not getting enough vitamin D. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. That, I- happened, that, that happened to be, I think it was last summer. Mm-hmm. I, I went to this physician. His name is Dr. Ronnie Whitfield in Baton Rouge. Mm-hmm. And he did some blood work on me. He found that. Uh, my vitamin D level was very, very low. I was sluggish. I was always tired. Um, and he told me, what you need to do is go outside in the, in the sun before 10 and after 3. Mm-hmm. Those are the better times to get the right type of vitamin D into your skin. Mm-hmm. And I did. And I think he put me on another supplement, but I don't remember what the supplement was. But what made me feel better is when I got out into the sun. Mm-hmm. It made me feel feel so much better. So now I'm making sure that I get a lot of a lot of sunlight during the day. Not really that direct heat light, but at least some of the glare or what have you from the sun. So uh, mm-hmm. I think that a lot of that has to do with you feeling so bad or so tired all the time. Is you don't have your vitamin D, and then plus you do have your other issue that's going on. Of course, mm-hmm. I'm not going to mention it unless you want to mention it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So he brought by the meal replacement. Mm-hmm. He also, and I also have a uh, eight-day eight supply of the, the Zizia mix, okay? Okay. Um, he said to give you some tea, but I think that maybe I'll give you two bags of the tea, and you do one one week and one the next week. That's um, the one that makes you how it does for the you. detox tea that makes yes. you go? Okay. Yes. So we have to be careful. Yes, so I suggest that you just detox. Uh, once a week, okay. and yes, don't let it don't let it steep too long. You know, yeah, let it steep okay. too long. Look like coffee. Don't drink that. Pour it out. Okay. Now you let know, me ask you this: um, Does sure. it make a, a, a quantity that would last a week, or is it something I do so many days? No, you want to you want to you want to take it one day of the week. Okay. And what I suggest is that you do it um, at night. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you know, it may be on a, uh, excuse me, you know, uh, around seven or eight o'clock at night. Then you will go normally the next morning. Okay. Uh, and I, this is kind of a, a trial and error thing that I've done because taking it really early, it wakes me up at night. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe around five if I do around six or five o'clock. And okay. taking it real, real late, you know, it gets me going around ten or eleven. So I've learned from my body that I need to do around 7 or 8 and then around 7 or 8 in the morning, then I, my elimination is fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? I feel you on that. Um, I am really excited about this opportunity of my health has been a declining thing. I feel quite fabulous tonight. I have my makeup on. I've uh, 
use my concealers to cover the dark circle so I don't look as tired. I definitely feel it. And I definitely continue to feel that pain. But I'm looking forward to that replenishing and regeneration from within that I, I need in my spirit, in my soul, my metabolism uh, to show through the skin. I used to have really great skin and I can see that it is stressed. Uh, you know, the blotchiness, the unevenness, uh, the dark circles. And I know that it has to do with quite a few things uh, in life. Um, I do suffer with uh, a continuing um, daily pain, uh, fibromyalgia, uh, and it is, and I remember hearing someone that had fibromyalgia, uh, fibromyalgia, a lady I met several years ago, and uh, I had no clue. I mean, you know, to look at a person from the outside, they may seem normal. Uh, it's not something you can recognize, like a rash or something. And so I remember her husband stating about how tired she always was. She slept all the time. She was always in bed or whatever. I'm like, right, yes, and nothing's going to hold me back. And even though I have that spirit of heart and passion to jump out and do the things that my heart desires or the visions that I can see and try and reach them, I daily have a struggle with dealing with and managing pain and I am wow. managing it without the aid of Advil every day or any other medication. Um, I think that that's a replacing the, pl the pain with the chemical is not really winning the battle. And so right. I try to manage it with mind over matter. Uh, I get up in the morning, do stretches. And there are some days where it's very difficult to get going because with the fibromyalgia, there are a couple of other things that are going on uh, with me um, from those injuries. Um, I've got a, a three discs that are herniated and, you know, a bunch of stuff, irregular curvature of the spine. And it's just a different, a lot of different things that I've dealt with. Uh, now being right. a few years, and you get to the point where you figure this is just how it is. I'll just deal with it. I notice that I don't smile as freely as I do. I notice that I hold my mouth a certain way, and it, I don't like to see myself on film. That's why you see me playing around with the camera on because I don't like to see myself with that tensed mouth or face right. because I may be thinking that I am not obviously showing that I'm in pain, but subliminally, I'm not aware that it is written all over my face. And so okay, I think it causes okay. wrinkles. I think it adds to the age that we have. And so I'm looking forward to uh, finding something that I that can carry me forward in not only uh, healing from this point forward, but erasing, repairing, and helping me move forward from the damage of of the past of living in other pain, getting those mus muscles to absorb oxygen again and to get that blood pumping and circulating in a more stronger, uh, you know, uh, pure form than what it is. It's, it's, my body has just been so stressed. I'm thankful that I can move around and, and have the capabilities to create and design the things that I'm interested in and, and implementing them. But it's definitely a struggle. I feel 80 years old a lot of the time. And I find myself wanting to bend and walk in a way that is more comfortable for, and relieves me of pain. And uh, But yet, I pass a mirror and I can see this, this ancient personality in me that's not really me. And I'd like to get back right. to, to myself with that. Well, I really, I think that um, starting on the Zisha will truly, truly help you. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I'm saying it's not because of what someone told me. It's what I know. Because uh, my mom is can testify to that, that she's been using the, the Zisha. And, you know, she, of course, she, she tries to do it every day. But what she told me one day was really so funny. She said, um... Oh, yeah, I went and I got one of them cans, and I drink one. I said, huh, if I drink one, I feel okay. Let me drink two. 
She said, I drank two of them things to clean up my whole house. So, and it wasn't that it was an energy drink. It was that she was giving her body vitamins that it was truly, truly lacking. Mm -hmm. And when she gave her body what it needs, it did what it was supposed to do, what God designed it to do. It started working properly. You know, and my mom's almost 80. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, but yeah, it'll help. It, it has been shown because we can't say that it cures anything or what have you, mm-hmm. but people have testified to the fact that their pain has either eased or been, is, has eased or relieved. Uh, people have said that their sight has gotten better. Wow. Uh, I had, I myself have bouts now that I'm on it of clear vision. Mm-hmm. Where I don't need my glasses. Wow. You know, so I can testify to that. I can testify to a person who suffered from migraines that my migraines are fewer when I'm on my mix because I'm getting the vitamin that I need. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not as tired anymore. Uh, we've had some men, we have a product that's called the XM3 Plus. Some men have found that uh, they have more vitality, for lack of a better word, mm-hmm. uh, when during that intimate time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't give you the desire, but if you've got the desire, it gives you that extra push. Okay. That's so, awesome. uh, so, yeah, so, okay. uh, we've gotten some wonderful testimonies. We've got people who have, um, like Fred told you today, his diabetes, mm-hmm. I mean, not diabetes, his cholesterol medicine, he was taken off of his cholesterol medicine. You know, he has an old football injury where now he's, the pain is not there anymore. Mm-hmm. And of course, all of it takes time. You know, I'm not going to tell you that we're going to give you this seizure for a week, Diamond, and your pain is going to be completely gone because mm-hmm. it didn't occur over a week period of time. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I can truly tell you as a person who uses the product that if you get on it, and you're faithful to it, that you're going to see a difference. And I wish that when you do it, that you um, take stock of your body. Mm-hmm. And I'm quite sure you do anyway, but take stock of your body and know what's going on with it, how you're feeling before you take it, you know, what kind of pains, what kind of discomfort, kind of think about what's going on in your mind or what have you, uh, if you can. I had to write mine down because mm-hmm. what happens is when you start taking it, your body instantly says, oh, my God, you've given me something that I can really use. So your body in its natural uh, survival just takes over and things start becoming normal that were not normal. I am so when you start on it, just kind of wonders, you know, am I, do I have more mental clarity? You know, how's my vision? You know, mm-hmm. uh, how do I feel when I get up in the morning? You know, mm-hmm. is the pain a little bit more intense or is less intense? Those things that you can testify to. <laughs> Yes, and you know, so I um, and there were a couple of things that you hit on uh, when you were talking about the time of day to to take the tea and so forth. I know that I mean I'm pretty regular, but I know that even with that little bit of regularity, we walk around with so much toxins in our waist, and I mean you know you've got two sets of intestines, and they certainly don't all get emptied at at a setting. And so to be able to get the body cleansed of things that have been sitting in wait, my Wait, wait, wait. You said we got two sets of intestines. Are you talking about the large and the small? Yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just yeah. a damn. I'm not, I'm not Kyle because you don't I'm have to say so one much, so set instead of two because there would be like four, two sets. But I mean... <laughs> Uh, it, I understand it, what you're saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. large and small intestine. Yeah. Yeah, and so sometimes you, it's not always purged and and uh, taken care of, and that can make us feel listless to carry around metals or minerals that are dead uh, and just sitting there um, finding themselves along the walls of our our intestines. And uh, right, right. Mm-hmm. And uh, and, and th- you know. I really, um, I really, you know, I talk to a lot of people about, of course, you know, adults, especially men, don't like you to talk to them about their bowel habits. So um, I talk to a lot of women about their bowel habits. They say, oh, I go on a regular basis. But is your colon being cleansed? Mm -hmm. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. Is it being cleansed? You know, because red meat stays in your colon for a while. Yeah, and then you also have different degrees of of waste, and you you know, it, depending on if you're drinking enough water or not, 
that uh, you may be going, but like you say, you're not actually purging everything that should be uh, heading on the way out. I, uh, I myself, and I like the idea of that vitality uh, with uh, your partners, whether you're male or female, and if you have the desire, then you have the extra uh, boost of Correct. vitality. Correct. I like that. Um, I had, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I have this young man that, uh, and I call him young man, he's in his forties. I have this young man, uh, that, and I'm not gonna say what he does, because then you'll know, and everybody will know who he is, because I, I talk about him all the time, but I gave him a bottle of XM3 drink. Mm-hmm. And it's a drink that you take, uh, when you want that extra push to a workout. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're going to work out at the gym. Well, I gave him that little bottle, and I guess I should have had some props to show you, but I gave him that little bottle, and he did it on a Friday night with his wife. Wow. And she asked him, what you been doing, taking Viagra? Ah, okay. He said it gave him all the energy and the extra oof that he needed to keep going. Oh, okay. Got you a little Energizer Bunny in it. Yeah, baby. I like that. Yeah, he had it. He, God, he was having it swinging and langing. That's all okay. I'm saying. But See, she was, she was happy. Mm-hmm. So, I tried to keep him supplied with the little bottles. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all you need is like two ounces. And it lasts for several hours. Whoa. Um, my, my daughter-in-law to be, her name is Jenea, mm-hmm. we went to Florida to uh, actually pick up my grandbaby from her mother. Mm-hmm. And, um, she took a bottle, half a bottle of the XM3 and drove from Louisiana all the way to Florida. Wow. You know, yeah. and was totally energized. I knew uh, some and definitely, I hear you. See, I, and I'll probably bring you some. I'm going to try, since I'm going out of town tomorrow, I'm going to try to bring you your product tomorrow okay. before I leave. So I'm, you'll have it. I was making and, a, a uh, joke because I was yawning so much. I apologize for that, uh, all that yawning. Look, I've been yawning too, girl. I didn't know my nostrils could swell so well. I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm trying to do a, look, I'm trying to do a cute yarn. Okay. My nose girl. flares. Look, I was trying to but, do a key uh, yarn too. It was getting away from me. So maybe, maybe we do, do the lead when we got a yarn. Or something. Okay. Wait, hold on. I got a yarn. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Oh. <sighs> so, um. The what? drag queen yarn. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. There was a time. So, um. <laughs> go ahead. Um. There's a time, there's a lot of times, um, more often than not, I'd say, um, dealing with what I deal with, with my health. Uh, I have some good days where I can, I'm pushing the water, I'm trying to get the rest, I'm taking a little one a day, which is not enough, but eating enough of the right things that somehow... I get in balance and it seems like it can last three days, maybe a week at the most. But most days I wake up literally feeling like I'm fighting for my life. Uh, I'm so depleted. It's like I'm, fi- I, I'm, I'm preparing to die. It's like I know I'm going to die and I don't know what else to do. You know, I've gone through the doctors and any suggestions and that is not the program that they want to put you on it. Well, the program they want to put me on is to say that I'm as if I'm over dramatic about my health, hyper hyper dramatic about the health, what I'm going through, as if the medical records are not enough, as if the criminal records and evidence are not enough, uh, what I've gone through, and especially my life itself, uh, works and, and, and Places that I've, I've traveled and gone through are not enough. Uh, but my body has actually been worn to its last frazzle. And so, knowing that I'm in a constant fight to not only keep even, even hedge on life, but also to try and inch a little bit ahead, 
is such a ongoing uh, struggle. My arms are so thin, and even on TV, you're supposed to look thicker than you are. And uh, it's a constant battle to keep weight on. It's a constant battle to uh, find the balance. It's like it's so far away. And uh, there are times when you feel like you're not going to win the battle that I just really, really forge harder into work because I want to complete it before something does happen. And so for me, it's almost been a part of a surrender in the fight because it's gone on so Okay. Okay. I understand, you know, um, you, it, uh, giving up is not an option. Mm-hmm. Okay, we know that. That's 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 not an option. You have too much to do, too much to contribute to this world. So give up is not an option. So what God has allowed, God has allowed us to get together. Mm-hmm. And for me, as you know, to be able to offer you a product that I know personally it works. Mm-hmm. It's not like a physician writing your prescription and tell you to try this. I know it works on somebody else. I know it works on me. Mm-hmm. I know it works on my mother. I know it works on my husband. Mm-hmm. So I can just let you know, Diamond, if you can get this Zizi into your body, I, I'm certain that you're going to feel better. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have your highs and your lows, mm-hmm. but once your body gets the nutrition that it needs, I believe with all my heart that you are going to be physically thriving. That's what I'm hoping. Again, I really believe that. Mm-hmm. I'm I all in that. On, the, on that and uh, on the whole concept of it because I'm like at a desperate state in, in the sense that I don't trust the doctors and I know that uh-huh. what I'm doing is not enough. It gets me there sometimes but flatten out or plateau out and then there's days I'm just totally helpless and I can't get anything done like that. So have to right. get past that. I have to be that poster child of not just going through this and coming through this, but being that standing testament of uh, of a, a soldier ready to be ready for the work that the Lord has for me. Right. Right. Um, so, I, I, I'm excited. That I'll be able to introduce you to this product. I'm not a. I'm not a. Excuse me, husband time. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll step away with just. Okay, hey babe. What's up? Yeah, you can bring some chicken. Yeah, that'll be fine. You want me to ask your daughter? Okay, y'all ask him because she still ain't talked to me. She Okay, I'm back. Okay. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but I, I'm just, you know, I'm excited. You know, I want to try to, I want to try to get this to you. Um, I don't know how early you get up. 
Oh, girl, 5.30 um, in the morning. 5.30 in the morning, okay. Because, uh, you know, you live you live all the way to the other side of the country. Oh, girl, I know. You know. I, I, I'm so trying I'm gonna to get to, my daughter to move in that direction, uh, away from Baton Rouge School. Okay. Yeah. That's another story. <laughs> yeah, I am... Um, I am actually trying to, um, uh, thank you. So I am actually trying to, um, figure out how to get to you. Don't give me a, don't, unless you're going to edit this part out because you don't want people to know where you live. Right. And, uh, um, girl, all the other stuff I'm doing, I've got a couple of things that edit out there, but yeah, I'm down on the river road between LSU, downtown and LSU. Uh, before you get to LSU, coming from downtown on Nicholson, but I'm actually on the River Road, which is one street over. I, I, uh, I'm trying to see what's tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. Wonder what my daughter has to do tomorrow. Maybe I can meet you halfway if I can get a hold of her tonight when we get off the phone. She had mentioned that I was supposed to be doing a photo shoot for Saturday. Uh, for something she was going to utilize it for. I don't know what, what, it, what it was for. I don't know what I did with my phone, of course. But I need to, let me see if I can ring her before it gets too late. I'm going to grab the phone and bring it right okay. back and see if I can buzz her. Okay. I knew I should have Did you get her? No, um, just rang and went to voicemail, and of course the voicemail is <clears throat> full, but she'll probably notice that they get that call right back shortly. Um, I was trying to think of where to meet meet with you as well, if she should call um, back. Um, okay. I'm going to put my thinking cap on that for a minute. My son gets off from work at 2.30, I think it is. And if he doesn't have anything planned already, I will check with him and see if he can bring me halfway somewhere to you. He works across. Okay. So I'll check with him in the morning. Uh, my cookbook is called Shamrock Soul. Blues and Passion oh. Cafe, Irish and okay. Soul Food, uh, Soul Food uh, Cookbook. It's got a few pictures in it. The Irish side, of course. Okay. And then we get to the uh, halfway mark. Halfway mark has a divider page. 
And of course, we're getting into the southern style food at that Ooh. point. And uh, okay. gumbo, catfish, red meatloaf, gravy, and such. But I'm just sharing a little bit. Got my little pictures in there for the collard greens. Okay. And then the dipping toast to go with it, you know. And uh, slow stick, a slow stew chicken and catfish and all of that. Um, originally, this book, this cookbook, was going. It's even got some drinks in the back. I put in there like uh, pumpkin uh, martinis for the winter time. Let me see how you do that. A pumpkin martini for the winter time. Ooh, okay. Or eggnog and stuff. Uh, hot brandy eggnogs and hot toddies for the body. Uh, but, um, oh, hot toddies for the body. Hot toddy for the body. You know, I thought, uh, Mr. Fred had him a hot toddy for the body and it's 42 ounces, 44 ounces. No, babe, only hot toddy he got up in that body is that ZJ XM Plus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, the originally the cookbook. Uh, that I, well, it was supposed to be an Irish and soul food cookbook. And me being the comedian that I am, uh, and like to be different, I'm sort of an enigma, uh, I wanted to write an, a, uh, sensual, erotic cookbook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, I made up some recipes. I have, I have it. I just haven't published it, but I have the recipes and the erotic one. I didn't have the gonads to produce it at the time because. I well, let me tell you this. Mm -hmm. I have about sixty-two pieces of poetry, erotic poetry. Okay. And my husband wants my husband wants me to put it into a book. Mm -hmm. Um, I wrote it. I wrote it during a time I did not have a uh, a partner. Basically, uh -huh. I was married, mm -hmm. but I didn't have a partner. Right, right. You know, he was out. He was out mm -hmm. doing his own thing. So I I made up my partner. Okay. And now. I talked to him. Okay. I love that. You know, and I um yeah. So I my partner. I I romance my partner in my poetry. It, the poetry is so erotic that my ex thought that I was dealing with another man. I love it. I love you it. You know, and one day when we, one day when we're, we're, we, you know, we're doing two women talking, we can do maybe an erotic or a, a romantic night and you can tell, you can do one of your recipes you know, just a sample of it. And then when you do one of your recipes, then I can do a piece of my poetry, you know, and um, kind of do, you know, the candles and um, I mean, the really, and have the people, Absolutely. Yeah, have people call in. And, you know, Absolutely. if you have a nice, if you have a nice, clean, erotic uh, poetry or mm -hmm. piece of um, mm -hmm. something that you want to say, call in. Let mm -hmm. us hear what you got. You know, uh, come in with the mood, you know, with just two women talking and, and just enjoying the moment. You know, and that's, um, that's definitely, we've got several nights of the week to work with. We're doing a two hour segment of our tapings. Uh, mm -hmm. we can have a segment called, and now it's time for Feel a Talk, Feel a Talk, Feel a Talk after dark. And go mm -hmm. right into it. I actually had started writing. Well, I had a writing uh, erotic writing business. I started in '95 called Hot Strokes. <laughs> Hot Strokes by pen mates, and it was a pen pal type of subscription uh -huh. where you could subscribe to erotic letters. And then I revived that business in '95 back up, but only briefly uh, about three years ago when I moved here. Uh, met a, ma a white male who knew a black female that lived in Hammond and she was like heavy set and uh, had her issues but she would write erotic stories and she wanted me to publish these erotic stories and I'm like well 
I started this thing called Spiderweb Diaries or something like that. Uh, and to take a spin off of the pen made hot strokes and not do the writing so much, it was to be a, um, a continuing story kind of thing where they can tune in and find out what else, you know, high topics with you tonight. Um, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it is. It's a little talking after dark. And so it could be a segment <laughs> that we do when we talk about and women, you know your 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 uh kid can be your the J J B dry. So, what are you doing, baby? Ain't to keep nothing it like and nothing like Astro Glad. You heard? Me? Okay. Now wait a minute. While we're on the subject, I had someone. Come, now I know we're not doing pillow talking after dark, but we got we're gonna put this in there. <laughs> but I had a guy. Show me something the other day. I didn't know what the hell it was. And he said, well, it's for the woman and the man. And it had a big ring on it that I imagine he would put himself through. But it had this little bitty thing on the end like a hair clip. I guess it's supposed to do something for the woman. I don't know what that thing is supposed to do. But what was really killing me was the part where he slides into this ring like a donut. He would slide into this ring. And at the top of the donut was like this little bitty hook that was like a uh, hairpin. But inside the ring was these jagged teeth. I'm like, what's going on with that? Why would he want to put himself there? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I have a friend. Her name is Toya Banks. Mm -hmm. She has a business and it's called, um, ooh, what is it called? Something chocolate. Okay. Um, I, I I can't remember the name, but I'm sorry, Toya, if you're seeing this, I'm sorry, I cannot remember. But it's ah, something chocolate. Anyway, um, oh, the taste of chocolate. Oh, is what it's called, and you know, and she sells erotic toys, and she, I'm telling, we got to get her on one night. She she's actually an expert of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to tell you the story how she introduced me to my first vibrator, but okay. and it was nothing kinky. She wasn't even involved. Okay, so I don't nobody be thinking about. It. I'm talking about the heaviness of one okay. somebody. And then but you anyway. want to introduce me to her too? <laughs> oh, that is all. Nothing going to happen up in here. I'm just kidding. Uh, but but <laughs> did she in the this little thing? Is she like um, in a flea market here or a mall somewhere? No, no, okay. no. She's she's like uh, on call. Okay. <laughs> you call her. She come on. Come on. Um, but, uh, no pun intended. No pun you call intended. Her, she come. Okay, no pun intended. She called. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, but um, there she showed me this little device, and it is it's a ring with little things on it. It's not hard. Answer that, maybe your child. Okay. Excuse me, just a second, April. Hi, sweet. How you doing? Um, we're actually taking the show segment right now, but I stopped in the middle of the show to give you a call. Um, my uh, sister girlfriend here and fellow talk show host, Ms. Alfreda uh, Jetson, and I are doing a show called Two Women Talking, so we're kind of two women talking right now. But um, she's got some health supplements that are going to help me get balance in the nutrition, and it's a... Uh, it's, Zha, Zha, Zha. I always say it wrong, man. I want to make that J A H real, but Zha, and uh, it's got a number of things that's up on this. But I need to meet her halfway somewhere, and I was wondering what your schedule is tomorrow. Did you have a full day? Can you hear me? Uh, hung up. Oh, you can you hear me, babe? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Lost that call. I can hear her saying hello. Hello, April. Hey, girl, the phone went somewhere else. I don't know where. I was about to hang up and call you back. Here you are. But I was calling you to see if you had a uh, visit. You can't hear me? My phone might need charging. That might be what my problem is. It, it's, not on, it's not on mute, is it? No, I don't think so. Let me see if I can get back to her. Um. Uh, No, it's not on the mute. Uh, Let me see if I can put her on speaker. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. 
I need a Verizon. If I got a holler, can you hear me now? I need a Verizon and not Sprint. Come on now. <laughs> but I was calling to see how your schedule is on tomorrow. Um, Miss uh, Afrida Jetson, our co-host for Two Women Talking. She and I are doing the show now. But uh, she's got some health and nutritional um, things for me, products for me to try. And I was wondering if you weren't, uh, if you weren't tied up, maybe I can get you to pick me up. We can meet her halfway somewhere. She's going to be coming from Baker, Zachary area. But I don't know how your day is. I know you got kids with kids starting school and all. Okay. She's got to go out of town, so we'll probably figure out how to do it. I'll see if I can catch Chris, too. Uh, did you decide anything on the photo shoot you were talking about? For me, I think you had one for me or no? Yeah, I'm like, I haven't been on since early this morning when, when I got the radio announcement from you. I think this is the last time I've been on. So, there's something else there? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I'll check it out. Because it's probably an answer to that work request I put in on why the videos are loaded but we can't see them in the video list or can't start a channel without it. So it's probably their response to that work order uh, request. Okay. And I'll take a look at it uh, first thing in the morning. I just wanted to check with you. We're going to get back to the show because I kind of cut away from okay. it. Uh, and uh, we'll talk in the morning, babe. Okay, ma'am. All right. Love you. Love you, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Sorry about that. So I have to try child number two and uh, have to catch him in the Yeah, morning. like I say, you know, if, if push comes to shove, you know, I, I get up every morning and I go, but tomorrow I have to take my stepdaughter to school. Mm-hmm. So I'll take, I'll drop her off and I normally sit down and drink a cup of coffee with my mom every morning. Mm-hmm. So I'll come back and I'll drink coffee with her as long as I be to the shop to open the boutique up by 10. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have, you know, two or three hours to play with. So if push come to shove, I'll just bring it to you. You just let me know. Okay. Cause I really, I really, 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 Want you to have this, and Fred really, really, really wants you to have it. Yes, I would so, like to start um, on it too, because that's what we were talking about today when we were talking about the show tonight. I would like to let the listeners know I don't always look this way. This is the face that I have on when I'm doing a performance or whenever I'm coming to present myself before you, the audience, and I want to look my best. But basically, because of the health issues I have, most of the time I have a very uh, neglected and stark uh, exterior about myself not just in my face there's dark circles uh, the knees are dressing I'm tired all the time there's like a hoodedness of tiredness uh, my body is in constant pain I feel frail I feel fragile and today I am going to be starting on a, a new product called ZJ it's ZJ Zija. 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 Okay, we're going to get that Zija. right, ladies. It's Zija. Starting on a new product today. It's called Zija. And I am looking forward to uh, you following along. Just stay with me on those results as I go through the next few days of the first, first seven days of the treatment. And we're going to, I'll be talking with you over the days, uh, perhaps again on Monday, Good. month, maybe Friday evening, and then again on Monday. We'll have a segment that will be geared to, a few moments of the segment will be geared to how I'm feeling, what I'm feeling, and what the progress is. So I hope you guys are staying tuned out there. If you have any health issues that you're concerned about, of course, you do want to speak with your physician. But there are so many wonderful uh, products here that I'm, I'm being introduced Correct. here that covers my interior as well as my exterior. So I'm looking Correct. really, I'm really excited about this. I tell you, I'm just so excited. I feel blessed. This is wonderful. This you is know, wonderful. I, 
I, I, you know, I, I love it, uh, especially to introduce it to a personality like Diamond Ryan. God, and yes, um, it. <laughs> it is. Yeah, say it. Come on, say it. Don't say it. Stop. Say it. Yes, yeah, stop. Uh, yes, but, that's yes. How you doing? Oh, that's the right. other girl show. How you, oh, no. That's the other show. <laughs> we got to figure out something else, you know. Yeah. Just two women talking. Just two girls talking, uh, you know. That's all we're doing. Uh-huh. Just two girls talking. So I, I really, really think that this will, is going to make a difference in your life, my love. I really uh-huh. believe that, you know, and if you, you know, only reason why it won't work is like I told you earlier today, you don't take it. Mm-hmm. And girlfriend, I need That's the only reason I feel why. like my shoulders are drooping. I have pain all in here. It's everywhere. I mean, they want to say, oh, it's rheumatoid arthritis, it's fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. My algae. Mm-hmm. And just a series of different, what they think are typical symptoms people my age would have. I mean, I don't know my, my foot, where my footsteps have walked. And so I'm right. looking forward to this discovery and uh, sharing it with our viewers. Yeah. I think it's going to be a very, very enlightening experience as well as with Zizia. Zizia also has a weight management part to it mm-hmm. uh, for, for those of us who have a little bit more than what we would like to have mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. it does have a weight management part you know that you can uh, you can take so I love that about it they just came out with the meal supplement that you're going to be taking but you're going to be taking not as a uh, a meal a replacement, you're going to be taking it as an addition to what you normally eat. So it's mm-hmm. going to give you more protein. It's going to give you vitamin D, your vitamin A, your vitamin C. It's going to give your body all these things that it needs in an, in addition to what you are going to already eat. Yes. And most because we just need to get some nutrition into you. Nutrition and and the detox. And yeah. I think I'm, be, I'm, I'm highly yes. poisoned right now between okay. the amount of stress I have had. And I know that that stress can, and, and toxins settle in our joints and settle in our cartilages and can cause neuro, uh, neurological issues with us. And, you know, it's trash, and I need to get the trash out yeah. of my bloodstream, the trash out yeah. of my joints, out of my muscles. Need right. To breathe. Uh, and right. My so, husband fusses all the time because I'm so stressed mm-hmm. that I'm tired. My right. mind is so stressed that I'm tired. I know. You know, and I, I try know. to take the weight of the world on my shoulder. I try to be everything for everybody. Mm-hmm. And when it does not go that way, then I'm stressed about it. I'm telling you. Know, and, we, and we as women, we do that. And we mm-hmm. need to stop that. We got to stop know. that. The more the right. world puts on we it, can't the more we it. think we can handle, you know. Correct. Yeah, for real. I can Correct. remember You're all that. Bring it on. We didn't have to do anything back in the day. We stand back and wait for them to open the door, car door right. and building doors. I mean, we had to climb right. cater to our men. But once you prepared that meal and fetched a few slippers and put on some pumps for the evening for the you know the boudoir for his activities, you were pretty much wrapped. Right. Uh, but now we're trying to replace the man, take care of the man. Let me let me introduce you to my husband, Ryan. Okay. Oh, come on, baby. Don't be chicken. Let me introduce you to my husband. Chicken. I'm not chicken. Hey, how you doing? Hi, this is my How you doing? Oh, uh, pretty good. How are you? Doing great. Okay. Doing wonderful. We're this trying to get this show this together. This is Diamond. Yeah, okay. this is my co-host. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm yes. glad y'all doing it. it. Sounds very good. I'm glad y'all got this project going. Well, thank you. We're I'm glad like- y'all have this. Go ahead. I was just saying, we're so glad to have you in our studio tonight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, in the studio. Oh, studio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you dropped by? Um, but yes, yeah. uh, I think that we've discovered that somewhere along the. The, the stratosphere of the solar system and the galaxies that somehow we found each other in like mind and, and uh, activities and envisions and have felt stressed or straddled on a fence of how to get to the next step and being overwhelmed by all the things and gifts you're given and how do you can deliver it so this is an awesome opportunity for us to not only give back and empower other women or other people in all the genres of business or or a life or health issues that we're going to talk about. So I'm just excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I am too for y'all. I'm, I'm very, very, very much excited about it. 
Well, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna let y'all have your uh, your conversation going. I'm just bringing the food. <laughs> <laughs> nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, Diamond. You take care. Thank you. You too. Okay. Um, so. Um, I that they had fries. They didn't have fries. I could have checked it. That's okay. You want to reach me that soda? Coke. Yeah, thank Slouching you. Slouching again. Trying not to slouch. Stop slouching. Yeah. Stop slouching. Slouch. Uh, loop my back. Diamond, yeah. Diamond is actually getting ready. Um, tomorrow she's getting ready to start a trial, seven-day trial on Zizia. Oh, she is? Yeah, she is. She has a, a, a medical condition that causes her to have a lot of pain and things like that, and she doesn't have any energy and all of that. Oh, yeah, I was, give a, I'll give a whole lot of energy. You see, my <laughs> husband loves it. And when he yeah. takes it, I push you know, through. So, uh, all of it spicy. You ain't told the whole story, though. All of it spicy. I did tell her that. <laughs> I like the idea uh, that it helps your hair grow, too. Mm hmm. I like that. Yeah. It's spicy. It's all both spicy? Uh huh. Okay. Okay, my love. Okay, baby. Yeah, I like the idea that it covers. Mm. So many areas of health and growth. I like that. I'm look, I, I need that so bad. Right. And then you know I'm going to talk about it because um, I need that internal transformation. I know that a lot of my internal transformation is being stronger and strengthening the Lord and keeping as close to the Holy Spirit as I can. Uh, and that's right. Up. And uh, the that's rest right. of it is man's world that's going to be fighting and gnawing at our ankles and everything we do. So I just Correct. have to be mindful that it's, it's precious cargo uh, that we're dealing with until we get this, this mission completed. It's, it's you know, have to do it, have to make it, have to be there, and and to get healed and restored. And you've got to be, and you've got to be at your best. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's Did you eat tonight? I have not eaten tonight. Actually, my stomach is actually just now really growling. When you were talking about something a few minutes ago, and I'm thinking, you know, but it passed by me because uh, I ate a late, I ate twice today, uh, heavy, more than I normally do. But I okay. haven't eaten the late night. But I will be getting a sandwich or something before I go to bed because um, I didn't do a heavy cook cooking tonight. I mean, I cooked early in the day, had pork chops and grits and. What else? I had pork chops and mashed potatoes, you know, pork chopped out today. Uh, but, I mean, I love pork chops. I can never really pork chop out. <laughs> I, I hear probably you. never really I, I, You know, but yeah, we're going to have to get together on a Monday mm -hmm. and go and get our um, our pork chop Monday with okay. Fred. Okay, girlfriend, I'm in on that pork yeah. chop Monday. You cannot miss me on PK. You know, and... um. And I'll come get you, you know, or what have you. You don't have to worry about the transportation issue. Um, as long as they haven't taken my, look, as long as they haven't taken my car, we okay. got wheels. Okay, I know you right so, there. I'm um, working on this this uh, mission. I've, I've spoken it that um, there's a mighty financial movement going on in the last quarter of this year that is going mm -hmm. to change things beyond, uh, that we'll just have to step into next year because this is already established in this year. And I feel that so strongly that I have a rest, even though I don't need to be rest and I never rest, but I, I have a calmness in my spirit that it, it's, it's, I'm watching it happen. It's happening. I, I really right. believe our, we met for a, a bigger reason, even more than the talk show, but I, and this health I thing is, believe that so much. I this, really do. This health thing has me so so struck about the the Z Z J Z I'm gonna get that. That's Zija. it. That's I'm, it. Z J Z J. Okay. Now I think that even that it has to do with the divine intervention because my most important thing that I toil with every day and I disguise it so much is how much I need to find a remedy for my health and how lack of trust I have in the medical system. The physicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know mm -hmm. there's some great people out there, but I just see all the propaganda of all the pills and the things that are going around, and, and I'm just not trying to buy into that situation and say, okay, I'm 55 now, I need to give me a Monday through Friday plastic thing with pills and 
you know, all day long I'm taking pill after pill, like pill to wake up, pill to put you to sleep, pill to calm you down, pee, pee, yep. And you're just not even running on your human body as God gave it to us. You're running on what man right. has mechanically got zooming around until it burns out and fizzles like an old firecracker, fireworks. Um, I truly believe that. Well, I know that he breathed, breathed life into us. And at any given point, if he can stop that breath, if it stops on his own, he can restart it. So that there's no point in life, I believe, that you're too far gone, that you can't be recovered or restored. Amen, my you know, sister. It's, it's, Amen. It's, uh, you know, and this brings up another subject, you know, people who just feel so hopeless that God can't help them that they kill themselves. Oh man, that's just cool. Somebody you know, should, I mean, talking may not help, but somebody will slap them two times and go, stop thinking yeah. like that. That's foolish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I know that it gets overwhelming mm -hmm. at times in your life, you know, but God is always the answer. I have God always. Leaking. But I've never want to do no suicide kind of thing. I mean, I don't care. I've been, Look, I, I don't went through the worst of stuff. I told Girl, my mom. I ain't going to hurt mommy, me. She, if, they find me, if they find me dead and it's not natural causes, they need to find the, first, the food that killed me because I'm too chicken to do anything to myself. I'm trying to tell you, and I don't like no pain. So we can't shoot. We can't stab. Can't do anything. And if, you, if you're looking at pills... Just to go to sleep is like, uh, uh I ain't doing that. And if you do poison, like, oh heck, no, I ain't doing that. You know, so hey, there's no option. I gotta, I gotta be here. And besides, it's so much fun to just be here till till he decides it's time. So, uh huh. I ain't gonna know to kill somebody trying to kill me. Talking about double homicide, right. be one person dead, it just be a dangerous fight right. over the gun. <laughs> Justifiable, baby. Justifiable. That's what I'm talking about. I ain't going with you. What you mean I'm going with you taking everybody? Well, let me get a hug and let's kiss on the way out. Just let me get close enough to get my hands on you. On your neck. I'm telling you. Just let me That's get right. close enough to get my hands on them. Then I'm going to wrestle that you know, gun down, girl. I ain't going there with my ex-husband so trying to kill me. I wanted to leave me oh, for another moment. ex -husband. Huh? I didn't know you had an ex-husband. Girl, I didn't know you had how an many do I have? That's another show. <laughs> I have. That's why I'm so stressed. I need this stuff. Girl, I have been through the ring. And first of all, I had four husbands. Yes, four. Married three, four other people, four other women husbands. Because I it obviously wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I married four other people husbands. And I had to let him go because I realized, no, not that one. No, not that one. No, not that one. <laughs> Hell no, not that one. And so I realized <laughs> I just married somebody else. That's why I was at a poetry reading a couple of uh, last month and a young lady asked me behind me. She said, you're so young and everything. You look so alive. I said, girl, look, I'm 54. I've been married four times. I've had six children, including a set of twins. I'm tired. You know. She said four husbands. You know what? I can't get married. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. <laughs> How many children you got? I have three. I have four living children. I lost twins. Okay. They were born. Uh, I heard the first one born. And the second one was breech. Uh, they came in the eight and a half month. And, um... As the first one was born, I heard the doctor say, "We're gonna." Well, they were telling me before it was some complications with the babies, and that they need to hurry and and take them now. Um, and so they said that they would have to put me out because the baby was second one was breached, and that uh, they were going to give me a C-section. So they put the gas mask on my face, which was my first time having that, and. Uh, I didn't wake back up like I was supposed to. <laughs> it would be days later before I would wake up. And the irony is, is that I had twin boys. And uh, I remember uh, 
I came to on a Sunday. They were born on a Friday. I came to on a Sunday. You okay with talking about this, babe? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a long time. And uh, for okay. me, it is... It's actually a spiritual message in it for me. Uh, because okay. my babies... Uh, I heard one born. Uh, I didn't hear the second one born. But I remember on the Sunday... I realized that I wasn't awake. I could see people, but I couldn't talk to them. And they were trying to talk to me. And I could see them. I'm looking at them like, just like that. Right. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm like, can't they hear me? I guess my lips weren't moving. I didn't know. I thought they could hear me. I thought I was talking. But I could see these doctors all around, and they were discussing. My children were still alive that morning. And, uh, you know, they, I can hear them talking. They were like, we, we got to tell her. Somebody's got to tell her. She doesn't know. She's out of it, you know. She should have woke up then. She should have woke up Friday, you know. We don't know why she's still out. And so when I did come to on that Sunday afternoon, about 4.30 or 5 o'clock, I uh, remember the, they told me that they had something they needed to tell me. And, of course, I could kind of hear what they were saying. I just could Everything was fuzzy. Right. So I knew it wasn't mm -hmm. good. And I was just, you know, just armored up inside for what they were going to say. And right. try and already determine what kind of face and what kind of response I'm going to have. I won't fall apart. I'll be the martyr, the trooper. I'll hold it in, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. And so they just said, you know, my, my children had passed. And I, oh, said, my Lord. and I said, I want to go see my children right now, soon as I woke up. And they were like, you can't get out of bed, you can't this. I said, well, you better find a wheelchair. I want to go see my children right now. And so they took me and wheeled me. I guess they had to go get them from where they had them that they put deceased children. And they wrapped them in clothing and they brought them to me. And I held one in each arm. And I can still feel the heat from their bodies. That's just how close it was in my coming back in their passing. And I say that it's a spiritual message because they could have remained here and I could have stayed gone. But he right. chose to bring me back here for whatever it is for me to do. And I really believe that this is that journey that I'm on now. I had to go through that fire uh, I had to go up on the mountaintop like Moses and learn things and, and be burned and cleansed and honed and humbled and made wise uh, to come back and be able to carry out this mission he has for me. And so my whole life now is a joyous, uh, a very joyous, even though I have the pain and, and all of those things, that's the nasty part that comes with being here on this place uh, called... Uh, Correct. Correct. Earth. Earthly life. <clears throat> but, so I take that with a grain of sand. A sand. Uh, but I, I'm most happy because I have a different vision. I don't see the world the way other people do. So I don't have challenges that they have. I don't have the fears that they have. I don't have that drive to become something that they have. I already am all that I'm going to be. It's just a matter of the rest of them finding out in their own time. But I am. He has loaded me down. And I'm armed mm -hmm, for battle. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to march. So I couldn't be mm -hmm. most, more happier. I don't have an apprehension. I even know that I'm so gifted and so blessed that if it should come upon something that I do not know, he will place the wisdom instantly within my mind to carry that out. I, I know that with every fiber of my body, I've had it happen to me uh, just all the time since I've gotten closer to Heavenly Father and the Spirit, you know. So I know that He gives me the gift of revelation. I know He gives me the gift of wisdom and to be teachers and, and to carry on His work through uh, another message. It's time for another Mother Teresa. She doesn't have to be a white Catholic woman. But it's time for someone to leave an impact in the world that has changed enough so that it's not about me leaving it, that they remember me, that they never forget what happened and that changed them. 
and I, it's my mission to change people. Uh, and I won't do it in a direct way like y'all need to change. It'll be more like look at what all can happen when you open yourself up to these opportunities. And uh, I may not affect world peace, but I do know they will know I have been here. I've, and it's always been a desire of mine, and it still is, to win a Nobel Peace Prize, and preferably in literature. And that's a goal. It's not that a, a hard of a goal. I've done so many things. I've been a singer. I've owned truck driving. You know, I've just done so many crazy, weird things. I would have never thought in high school my life would have taken these turns. And as dark as many of those roads have been, many, many of them have been, they are lessened in the amount of pain I feel or even the amount of memories I have of them by the small bits of joy that are ever so sweet that come in between. Because that sweet taste, as little as it is, it lingers inside of me and I taste on it every day. And that's a joy that I just can't even buy. I can't, I can't even describe. So there is a peace about me in my calmness, in my poverty or in my struggle. I'm not even really worried about the poverty or the struggle. I'm only poor because other people who say that you should have this say that's poor. But if you were to lay down the gifts he's given me that one cannot materially, physically hold, then I'm rich beyond my means. Now, how come people have to call you when you if you tell them you have a TV show from eight to ten? They gonna call at ten oh four. Like you, the first person they get ready to talk to. That's called. That's called ignore. You know, ten oh four. Oh, she done that show. Do you know it's called a wrap up? Or maybe we're gonna go overtime. You never know. Golly. You we got to talk about that next. What's wrong with the men? Are they smelling something? Uh -oh. Is it something in the air? I mean, it's not all of them because some women have been fortunate to get them something. It's that Y. It's that Y chromosome, baby. Girl. You got, you like said something when you, now you almost went back to the erotic conversation right there. Because this that looks y like us. Chromosome. This looks like us. And I'm like, that's why they like that. I, <laughs> I thought you were trying to tell me subliminally is the V. No. No. Uh, okay. Well, you know, that applies too. It's the V. They kind of stuck on <laughs> silly. Oh, stuck on silly on that. But yeah, I don't know what yeah. it is. Is it because women are taking care of men more today? Uh, allowing, the, taking on the male role, wearing a penis? Well, and, And allowing the men, yeah, we're, the women are wearing penises and they're allowing men to wear their house slippers. What's with that? You know, I, I never understood that. I never thought in my life that that role would change. Uh, when I was brought, when I was coming up, mm -hmm. you know, I was, was, was thinking in my mind, I want to be like my grandmother. You Me know, too. I want to be a housewife. I want mm -hmm. to take care of the children, take care of my husband. You know, uh, but time changed, and now women are even saying, I don't need a man. I know. And it's okay for us to be like we are enterprising business women. I'm going to have that partner, right. and I'll still be this person. But to go all the way right. over and say that he don't even have to work. He at home with his homies all day. She over there at Wendy's and got to go on her second job to house sit for Miss Myrtle. And then leave that and mm -hmm. go get the groceries. Catch the bus back home and come in there. He's sitting up there video gaming with the homies with some 40 ounces and a couple of blunt joints in the ashtray. Tell my baby, what are we going to eat? And they get up and go yeah, and you know, baby. Or, or they're waiting for their refund check. Yeah. You know, in the beginning in? of the year, you know, you got them three babies. So I know you'll, ch I know that refund check going to be $8,000. So, Girl, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and but the thing is, constant. But our women, ex but you know, a lot of women accept that. I don't get you that. Know, I can't they take accept, 
Yeah, they accept they accept the men who are refusing to be men. Mm-hmm. You know, they accept the men who say, you know, you go to work and when you get home, you cook for me. They're accepting that. And you know, I can understand it now with the economic. With the, I understand now with, with the way the economics are now and the way you know the economy is is now, and that a lot of men are home, but you know. There's always something that a man can do that a woman can't do yeah. to make ends meet. Yeah. You know, so, but a lot of them, you know, I know we had this discussion a while back. Uh, a lot of them have allowed themselves to be beat down. Mm-hmm. They've actually given up their throne as kings mm-hmm. and be- decide that they just want to be a subject and allow their woman or their wife to be the king and the queen of the house, mm-hmm. you know, and then they're wondering why the children don't respect them as man. You know, um, we've got to take our roles back. I'm not telling women not to be professionals. I'm not telling them not to have careers. I'm not telling them not to go beyond. I'm just saying that we have to realize that our men need us also. And, and then we up. are stronger. Mm-hmm. Then we are stronger than a lot of people, a lot of women are, you know, think. We have the power to tear down nations. Mm-hmm. And build a up. woman can tear down one nation at a time, or she can do a whole nation. We have that type of power. Mm-hmm. But we've got to realize that we have it and to use it for good now, that's and not for evil. Well, that brings up an interesting point. Uh, you made me remember because we, and it, it's this, this fence crossing thing. And I know I want to get on that a little bit more as we talk more on our issues. What is it? It's a, it's a fence sitting, uh, situation. In other words, um, I was talking to a gentleman not too long ago. Well, I talked to him all the time, but I hadn't talked to him in a minute. He lives in Carson City, uh, Nevada. Only black there. He kills me, girl. He is, he's, he's like a yuppie. He drives a Beamer. He talks up proper. He's black. I mean, he, he, he's from the old Black Panther days, so he will go through down and call the boys if we need him. But he is educated and a businessman and his own money, his own money and stuff. But he lives in Carson City, and everybody knows his name because he's like the only black guy. And he says, well, isn't there another black person? He says, well, there's one other black, and he's a professional, too. So, okay, but where he lives, girl, the neighborhoods, the projects, the the parts, well, he doesn't live there, but when you go into the neighborhoods where the projects are, or, I mean, he was telling me the other day, just last time I talked to him, two two things, we'll get back to the main point, but one thing was, he said, look at this guy pulling up that parked that old raggedy car in front of my house with the matching, mismatched door paint, and them old 26 rims on that old, old Cadillac. And she need a ride. They always fighting and screaming every night, throwing stuff against the wall. Uh, welfare project chick. Not black. Whole neighborhood of crime. Uh, all these people pants sagging, thugging, gang banging, ragging. All white folks in poverty. And so it's ironic that the roles are so reversed that he's the black suburban or uh, uh, urbanite living amongst all of them and going oh gosh there goes the neighborhood where usually that's what they think of us but I want to get back to the first original point for a minute because I just had to say that Bert is his name and Bert was telling me he said you know and I've heard men say this this year it had not been more stronger said to me than this year if it had I never paid attention but there is debate, speculation belief in many men, particularly those of a religious backgrounds, a certain religious backgrounds, maybe Islam or Muslim or whatever, and some Christianities, believe that as we look back to the beginning of man and humanity and go back to the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden, uh, which is in Ethiopia, was in Ethiopia, uh, is. Um, you know, birth of man and woman, uh, in that time in Africa, that there were 
I mean, the, the, the women were the head. The queen is the head and the king follows the queen. They have it set up mm. where, you know, he's the king, but it's actually the woman right. who has all the regal place and that there were more queens that reign during those times in the past than kings and kings started reigning more uh, if they were with a queen. And so when I hear them speak on that and the man's role for them is, uh, yes, I'll stand up and protect you. Yes, I'll be the man. But it's what you say, go. Uh, how the household should be ran, where should we should live, how the kids should be. And the, the back, being that backbone of the man in that sense. So as eons and generations pass, I would imagine man has begun to think, okay, woman is the backbone and has supported the man up. And now they've just gotten away from supporting the man up to just supporting the man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And so we've got right. each step right. further away from her being in a regal position of, of regalness, not necessarily a disciplinarian or the man of the household but the one who set the pace for the man and the children in the household or even running countries being that she may have inherited through a dowry or something but when we get away from that role of the woman to the woman that's in slavery times as the backbone is sticking with the black man always there with him hoping he'll pick himself up and stand up and be what we think we need right. To move and fast forward another 30 years to the woman that has said, we need to both work to help build this house, to get our dreams. We want bigger houses. We want more cars. We want to keep up with everything new on the market. To move and fast forward another 10 or 15 years to the woman who just don't care if you got a job. I don't care if you're in prison. I'm just glad you're at home when I get home. I'm going to take care of you, baby. What you want, boo? <laughs> Where did we go? Yeah, wrong? hit me up with them. Get like me, that? Look, yeah, hit me up, girl, with them Nikes. That's what I want. Them all, them all good old school converse. You heard me? I'm, here, I'm saying, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> shawty. <laughs> yeah, shawty. I love that. That's crazy. Oh, we were never that bad. Yeah. We had yeah. our slang, but I don't think it was that bad. No. We couldn't no. curse. What you? Used to, you know, I think it used to be chick. Chicken head. Chick, chicken. Well, I think chicken head was one that was really something that might have wants. But this is my chick. Oh, um, yeah. What else you used to call it? Chick. Um, oh. Well, when, um, when it was bad, what? when they really, I thought when they were really getting Red bad bone. and lazy was my old lady. Mm-hmm. My old lady. My old lady. Mm-hmm. Well, I got to be right. old. Oh, yeah, lady. hello. And those two words don't even go together no way. What's wrong with them? Okay, come on now. I so, mean, but this yeah, is my way. You know, we got, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, then they got into the Afrocentric time of their life. You, they were calling you queen. Uh huh. You know, uh, but, um, yeah, we need our, our, our men need to train our young men how to be men. Mm-hmm. Um, how to real how to realize that, or to encourage them to step out and be supportive men, not being men supported. Exactly. Um, and you know, because I I just remember how the older people would talk about young men who are not you know who are not working, you know, and how lazy they are, and and the word that really pissed them off was. Trifling. Ooh, they can't stand it still today. I call them men or two that they cringe. But those they men really were trifling. Trifling. He's a There's trifling. Mm-hmm. And you I, know, so I have but, a couple of trifling men in my circle, girl. I call them trifling every chance I get because they're so trifling. Ooh, yes. they trifling. Yes. I, and, you know. Um. So. Ooh. You know, I just, I just can't see. You know. Um. <laughs> I just can't see a man not supporting his woman. I, I just, you know, I'm quite sure that, that that is out there. And I know, like I say, that the economy is really bad and jobs are hard to find and what have you. You know, but let's say that you're not working. 
Mm-hmm. When she's coming home, she's bringing home the bacon. Mm-hmm. Show her you appreciate that. Yeah. You know, at least have mm-hmm. the house clean. If you're going to be home, make mm-hmm. sure there's some food. Give the grass cut too. Give me a break. Girl. Come on. Come on. Need so to be dressed. Until you, get back on, until you get back on your feet, I got you. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they need to, you know, they need to do that. Yeah. You know, I think we need to do, we need to do a show on, um, uh, what a real woman does. Okay. You know, because you got a lot of these babies having babies and don't know just because you have a baby, you're not a woman. Mm. You know, a lot of responsibility comes with being a woman and it ain't about what's between your legs. Right. Uh, and may, you know? man case too. I mean, there's a lot of males That's out right. there, but there's very few men That's out right. there. That's right. That does not make you a man. That makes you a a um uh irresponsible. A, a, not a female. Yeah, irresponsible. You know? irresponsible. Irresponsible, right? Mm-hmm. That thing can get you in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. Has got you many know? people in a lot of trouble. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, and um, when I I was watching this commercial, I think it was Vagisil or something, and it says, "Hell to the V." The commercials you know, gone um, too far. The yeah, commercials baby. are gone too far. Girl, if I see one more pair of panties on the line talking about how to clean the blood stains out of my draw my crotch. I mean, you know, I mean they didn't say it that direct, but it's like your laundry can come out pristine clear after your period. Right. Little mishap. Right. Duh. Dinner time, you know, yeah, seven you p.m. Can, you cannot, you cannot sit down and 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 watch television, um, and and without having that type of of information coming across the screen, or you know, you got these two old people and they're talking about erectile function dysfunction, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> yeah, it's two old people know, too. And Nobody trying to look, get their I'm like, don't sit. Don't sit your ass down they the way to and enjoy your grandchildren. What you going um, on TV anyway talking about your, 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 your a dysfunction. don't stand straight. Okay. You know what I'm saying? A dysfunction. But, you know, and you even can't, if it was I, function, the best thing, mm-hmm. huh? Even if it was functioning, they probably could only reach halfway, uh, you know, you know they can't go, is this, and they I couldn't reach the distance. I understand that they're having issues and all that, but do we have to see about it uh, at, you know, family time during the day? Do we really have to know okay. about it then? Do we have you to know, know um, but, and I know that a lot, even some young men are having that issue, and I'm trying, I'm not trying to put them down or say anything like that, but my goodness, let there be a time that we have some decent television when we're trying to sit down and eat our macaroni and cheese. Please. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what is so, that? Um, what, what would that, I guess, what is that? She, I mean, what I, would... I, I just don't... Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I don't get it. I remember when television would go off at midnight. Okay. For real. You know, I remember when they used to show television shows and the woman and the man didn't sleep in the same bed. They had two twin beds in the bedroom. You remember? That? Mm-hmm. In fact, radio went off, and, off too at 10 or whatever it was. Yes, radio went off. That's you, right. You, you know, so you had nothing else to do but to sleep. Yeah, you wouldn't have all that That's in your mind. All you had to do was to sleep. These That's kids right, go to bed you know, with the MP3 headphones in their ear when they're in the bed. You know, brain never shuts off from it. Never okay. shuts off, and they wonder why these kids have this so-called ADD, ADHD, HTT, TAPT, MOP, MOSE. You know what I'm saying? And want to kill people. Thank you, because they never get a chance to rest their brains. Their brains are always moving. Yeah, you know they're always moving. And these parents don't make them take naps. They don't make them take naps like we used to. Every day we had to take a nap at one. One that with the clock slack. I don't know. That's right. Go ahead. Say, get your Go lay down in there and take a nap. That's right. And I, you know, there's one thing that I know for sure that I really appreciate. My son and his, uh, my son and his, um, his uh, fiance, they're here. They have, a, we have a little apartment in the back part of the house and they make sure that my grandbaby gets her nap. Mm-hmm. You they know, need yeah. it. That's what, what time makes you need to go back there and get a nap. Her body needs to be replenished. She needs yeah. that. That's you know, why she we needs get, to yeah. get her mind together. Yeah, that's you know, how you get your mind. Her that she's growing. Mm-hmm. Our greatest right. thinkers, our greatest inventors, and creative mm-hmm. imagination comes from that rest. You know, it's like, give me a break. That's right. You, you've got to 
you've got to rest. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I just, I just, you know, I, I think that someone, um, man, male figure, needs to say, okay, my son, I'm going to teach you how to be a man. Girl, do you I know, talk about that? I'm going to teach you how, teach you how to be a husband. Huh? I'm going to teach you how to be head of your house. Huh? I have never heard of any training that says, let me teach you how to be a husband. Well, see, that's that. my biggest pet peeve too, and I talk a lot about that in the book I wrote, um, Broken Path, I think it is. But <clears throat> the problem is, is that they need to have that crap in it in junior high school called relationships. You go through mm. high school and junior high school and you just find out your little weenie go in the hole. Next thing you know, you got a baby. Mm-hmm. You don't know nothing to do with no woman because you never had relationship training. While we were little, uh, us girls were, especially our generation, it may not be as true for these newer generations, but I can get on that point in a minute, but we were busy playing with dogs. Barbie Correct. had Ken. Ken ass was quiet. He was always on that beck and call. We didn't know nothing about yeah, Ken. Really was quiet. Girl. They said Ken was quiet because he had no, he had no male genitalia. <laughs> That's why he had to be quiet. He really was her, her gay boy, her gay friend. And in fact, he was her gay homeless orphan friend because he didn't have no yeah. house or no family. He had no he relatives. Sure she had a sister mm-hmm. show up and a cub, Cindy and Susie. Uh, Barbie had a few mm-hmm. relatives show up. And she had a job. Yeah, she had a, and fine cars and clothes. Ken's staying out at her house all the time because he ain't got no house. <laughs> That's probably why we taking care of these men today. Because they think they're Ken. They think, we think they're Ken. The men, the reason why they don't act right because they wasn't, they was playing with G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe lived in the field. All he did was fight. And, you know, they got the, the the little green men with the guns. They used to have their stand up being already in a little pose. I, <laughs> my brothers had so many of them. My mother then must have bought them for Christmas like $3 a bag and just spread them out like you had a bunch of toys. <laughs> that and high wheel cars. But the boys were busy either racing uh, mm-hmm. cars or battle, cowboys and Indians, or the G.I. Joe thing. Ain't no woman in any one of them roles. So how in the hell by the time they get grown, they know what to do with us except go walk, walk on the boobies. Right. They don't know what else to do with a girl. And after you walk her off and bonk, bonk, you know, you through with her, she ain't G.I. Joe. So we leave her. That's school. right. We're dealing with nothing but puberty comes in. And let's see, bam, 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 see what happens. And oh, hell, am I supposed to be with you after this too? Correct. And they don't know what to do correct. with each other. They need relationship they, training. Correct. They need to correct. know the differences you, you just, of how girls know. think, how the girl mind psyche works, how the male psyche works, how lot men think logically. We do not think logically. Hey, let it go. It's acceptable. I'm not, well, there's times I am because I had an ex-husband trained me to be like a man. A lot. So I said, you keep on. What you need to do is just go and marry your man if you want somebody to be more manly. I'm a woman with boobies. I don't have to be logical. Duh, I got the good. I don't have to be logical. Right. That, and see, men are going to the Walmart. I'm going to the hardware store to do. I'm going to pick up a slip joint uh, nut and a hook. And they walk their little ass right on through the checkout line, cut through the clothing department, straight down there to, to the uh, hardware department, not pass some fish in the stop and pick up what they need. Turn around, come right on back out. Check out, and they're in the car. We, okay. Fishing department in the back. I'm going to get the hook for him, but right now, wait a minute, these baby clothes on sale. I think Junior needs some of these. So you got to stop mm-hmm. getting the baby clothes because they on sale. And then when you That's cut right. through, oh, hey, while I'm here, let me go on and get the milk and the cheese. We in Walmart. I might as well make the grill. Yeah, so right, right, because I got to cook. I got to cook on Friday. Today Wednesday, so I know I got uh, something for the night and tomorrow. So Friday, I got to cook. I got to make sure I got that straight. Now, what ain't saying? logical about huh? that? That sounds mighty mad- logical to me. But they say we're logical. logical. They say that right. men think A, B, C, D, 
and we think A, C, B, D, which we do. If C can come before B if, if C is the baby clothes before you get the hardware. Right, and then two, and then what, what, and then what God does, God says, okay, these are my daughters, mm-hmm. Diamond and Frida, mm-hmm. so let me give them some more alphabets. <laughs> so we are the creative thinkers. <laughs> yes, thank you very and our much. Our mind is like this. Constantly, this is this is our mind constantly like this, you know. And we're thinking about this, and we know that we got to cook, so we're over here and we're thinking oh, about yeah. that. But that we know that tomorrow that we've got to go and make sure the car is done, so we're over here thinking about that. Then we realize that the children's going to need something in an hour, so we're thinking about that. Then we realize that okay, my husband has to do this, so we're thinking about that. Mm-hmm. And then we're thinking about this, and we're just constantly going. Then we realize, oh, I'm creative, so now we got to think about another create. So. God that. throws Diamond and Frida into the mix, and that really messed the men up. Huh? But it's getting ready to shake up a whole. Because we got too much going on up here. It's finna shake up bad roots, baby, because they don't even know what's coming. That's that's, that's a killer. You heard me? Uh, they don't have a clue. It, it's gonna be a firestorm of of excitement. I bet it's gonna be some people, women gravitating. Haters oh, and all, yeah. trying to get close oh, enough yeah. to find out what the deal is. But and trust me, when I tell you that I can smell crap a mile away. Okay. And Ooh. I don't, I don't, I don't. I am not starstruck. I don't want anybody starstruck on me. Let me do me. Let me do me. Just yeah, I'm a regular me. person. You know, speaking I'm of starstruck. They, there was a star mobile van or something down at the state capitol today, and I got the call. You want to go down there? Oh, heck no. Yeah. I was going to we were star online my- when you were talking about somebody was telling you about somebody was down there. Was it for real? Was it true and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had some film crew down there, but I wouldn't even run down there and see them people uh, and do all of those sort of things, you know? Oops. I got a right. mess going on. But I, you sit, hit upon so many interesting points. Uh, First of all, my biggest thing uh, that before I get on the point is every time we do the video, I gotta hurry up and get on the Zing Zia. Zisha. 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 Z E E. Z Z I J A. Mm-hmm. I gotta put it in a Z E because I say I gotta okay. get it in there. I gotta stick it in there some kind of way. Right. The, the J A. Zisha. Correct. Okay, Z Okay, so like Zach Gabor. Think about Zach Gabor, yeah. And she starts with disease. I gotta remember Zach Gabor. But um, y'all, I really need to start this program because every time I come on here lately, I always look like I done smoked a joint. I'm so tired. So I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait till I can open my eyes up. I'm straining now. I'm not trying to look cute. I just as hot, big as I can open them. I'm tired. Because you're tired. <laughs> yeah, because you're tired. Yeah. But I this guarantee you, this is gonna it's gonna make you feel better. It that's really why I put is. the light it's on really top. Make you feel better. I put the light on top of the eyeballs so it looks like they open. open up. <laughs> like they open, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I just thought about that, but that's really the truth. It's like that's probably what I really was thinking. Like, girl, make it look like you're looking. <laughs> right. Right. Maybe if you need to fell asleep, they won't know you're asleep. <laughs> oh, that ain't true. I know you can't your butt to sleep. You know if my lips aren't moving, <laughs> I ain't I'm asleep because I'm always chattering. Oh yeah. gosh. But that's fun. That's funny. It's an exciting time. So, um, but I'm 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 excited. Um, you know, especially with our meeting on Monday, you know, and we can, what is that? That's the battery telling me I got 17 minutes remaining, but that really means seven minutes. Uh, there you go. Well, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to shut it down, but I'm just excited about, um, Monday and us meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am going to try to get, um, <clears throat> I was supposed to actually do that tonight, but I'm going to try to get us a t-shirt done Sunday, possibly. Oh, After my Zisha cool. seminar, mm-hmm. and uh, so we'll have it for that. Monday. I love that. I want to see it again. I love that. 
Where did they go? I think it's what? in the files. Your logo with the women, two women talking, that is sexy. Yeah. It's got two women yeah. on it. Oh, I just stretched uh-huh. that in the way. Girl, I just stretched us. I can't even see us now. I put Okay, there it is. I had the other thing. I didn't know it could open up that wide. <laughs> Child, I be struggling sometimes. I think, you know, it's really a struggle. But I yeah. really like those logos. I like that red. I like the two little sisters. They're different, but they're similar. Uh, they're similar, right. Mm, right? That's fly. Right. That's so fly. I think that that's, I think that's really going to be wonderful. Uh, if we get together on Monday and we, uh, we're okay with it, we'll go head on and, uh, lock it down mm-hmm. and just, just go from there. You know, just two women talk. I love so, it. Yeah, me too. I think it's awesome. I think it's I awesome. see the money um, coming. Cha-ching. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Yes, Hello. It's going to be a blast because even our outtakes are going to be wonderful at the end of some of the shows you know just one line oh. that we may have said all right all right uh that we may have said uh if i cut off girl that means they ain't gave me 17 minutes they clock as fast that's okay just baby, that's 17 okay minutes and then the beat again but i'm loving this and i think it's a great opportunity for us to open doors for stuff but also to just spread our wings as far as we want to in bad news. there's nobody doing this we have no competition Girl, we're gonna have so much fun. I'm we serious. We're gonna have so much fun. We're and gonna be in everybody's thing to TV. This is fresh. We're gonna be in everybody's business. Everybody. Everybody's business. And not only will we be doing it on this internet, you know I'm gonna go approach some people. We're gonna go approach some people and put this on Fox. We're gonna I'm straight with that. You know? Anytime mm-hmm. the more the man the brothers are on Fox, you know we finna rock out. We're gonna take Saturday night. We're gonna go on an hour before them because midnight to one ain't nobody really watching. Yeah. Yeah. But Saturday we gonna keep night. them up. Uh huh. So if you we ain't gonna keep them up, baby. We're gonna do that because they need that program and it'd be good and fun. And we might even get a, we might even get a daytime Sunday slot on some of our programs. Yeah. Because you know right. we have to go somewhere where, like the rodeo, or go try and ride a horse or something, or or somebody is yes, doing a garden or something, volunteer with an elderly garden park and, yes. and help do yes. the garden. And today we're right. planting, what the hell are these plants again? <laughs> the cucumbers. We're going to plant some cucumbers. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. So y'all stay tuned, because if we do this right, it's going to be some food come up. Yeah, next year. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's right, girl. You know I have bananas on my banana tree. I didn't eat them when they bloomed in February. I'm going to peel one tomorrow. Girl, Jeez. you know you know what I called you on Monday, mm-hmm. and your butt was not at that hotel, and you talking about, when I was out there cutting the banana tree, I said I cut her damn banana tree. Got me all the way down here in the Renaissance and she ain't talking about she's a forgot. Girl, you know I need to be at that Renaissance. I was in the yard with the mosquitoes and I don't know what made me go on and do it that morning. I guess I, it was frustration from so much on my mind that I had overloaded with the weekend, with the NEA, with the school tubes, with the Christian and I was just, it was an overload. And my brain cleared up data on Monday and I'm like, well, I got time. What am I going to do today? <laughs> like I ain't had yeah. something to do mm-hmm. but I would have much rather been at that renaissance and had a yeah. leisure day morning I could have really if I had my brain function I'd have been there maybe an hour before you and would have just chilled out because I need that kind of breakaway time that's probably one of the reasons why I chose it I like the fire I like the ambience it's relaxing to me and uh, it would have been great time to do some good work uh, on that so I really dropped the ball on that and, uh, so what's our what's our game plan for Monday Diamond? We's going where is we gonna meet at though? We haven't decided on that yet. Renaissance, the Renaissance. We did say back at the Renaissance. Okay, well I'm gonna be at the uh-huh. Renaissance. I said I, I told you that I would come on down to the Renaissance. That's right. As long as you make sure you doctor. be there. That's right. I gotta go to the doctor she, that day. But I tell you what I'm gonna do yes. is. Oh oh no. <laughs> What happened? I lost the um. I I got a running plug up.